Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Irina Babrova. I'm Chief Operating Officer here at Pitbull Tax. And today uh, I'm here with uh, our um, staff members, Will Beiswanger, Sales and Customer Service Representative, and Dylan Schrager, our Retention Manager. So um, before we continue with our subject, uh, let's uh, do some sound checks. Uh, if you can hear me fine, can you please uh, post in the questions uh, bar that uh, you can hear me and uh, where you're from? I just want to make sure that California is up. Okay, I have uh, Texas, I have Michigan. Hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, everybody is. Uh, California is here. Yay, you woke up. So Ohio, Texas again, uh, next door, Florida. Okay, good, 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 good. So New York, thank you for joining. South Carolina, Florida again, California, Sacramento. Good job, guys. Eight o'clock in California and you're already up. I am honored you, you didn't miss this webinar. So I'm just waiting for... Um, um, few more people to join. I see that the attendees are joining as we speak and we will uh, go on. So today's topic is how to use client portal. Uh, you know, everybody's stuck at home, uh, most of us, uh, um, and uh, we have to uh, use a lot of uh, remote control uh, resources and we have to communicate with our clients right now remotely. So that's why there is a popular demand of uh, our client portal tool. And uh, in the last uh, two weeks, uh, we have received a lot of phone calls. That's why we decided to uh, do this webinar to explain you how to use it, uh, how to um, utilize the features you probably didn't know about the client portal, how to customize it uh, to your needs and um, uh, to make your life easier. It is uh, already difficult and we understand all the frustrations and struggles that you're going through. That's why we want uh, to help you. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows Client Portal is a standard feature in Pitbull Tax software. That means you don't have to purchase anything separately. So it's already included in your license. And um, uh, the only category of client of our customers that don't have access to client portal is people with one-time use license. So those types of licenses, they have access only for one client. And for that reason, uh, client portal is not available uh, for them. But everybody else, if you have a monthly plan, if you have annual plan, it doesn't matter. You all have access to client portal and you don't need to purchase anything. And uh, with this, I think uh, we have uh, pretty much everybody uh, joining in. Uh, let me uh, give the floor to Will. Uh, please, Will, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is William Beiswinger, and I'm a customer service and sales representative uh, with Pitbull Tax. And today, I'm just going to go over uh, all the features of the client portal, how to use the client portal, how to send the invitation and pretty much everything you need to know about the client portal. So I'm gonna start getting into the PowerPoint now. Okay, so as Irina mentioned before, the client portal is free to any single user license or multi-user license. The only license that doesn't have the client portal is the one-time use license. So any monthly plan, annual uh, license will have access to the client portal. It's not an additional fee. So first, I'm going to start uh, with how you um, send bulk invitations to the client portal um, to multiple clients at once. So if you go to your client list in the top left corner, you click the clients tab and you open up your client list. You can um, check the boxes of the different clients um, you wish to send the invitation to, or you can just check the box at the top left corner and it'll check all your clients. And then you can just click send invitation at the bottom there, that but, that red button, and it'll send the, the client portal invitation to all the uh, selected clients at once. So that's the first way you can send the client portal invitation to your clients. Uh, I'm gonna get into some of the other ways you can do that. Okay, so um, another way you can send the invitation is you can just click the files tab on the, the blue menu bar at the top 
And once you click the files tab, it's going to open up uh, the files section. And then if the client has not already received an invitation or registered with the client portal, you'll see the button, the red button in the top right corner that says send invitation. So when you click that send invitation button, it's going to um, ask, it's going to prompt you uh, to type in their email address to send the client portal invitation. Uh, I'll show you that in a sec. First, I'm going to show you the third way you can send the invitation. So if you go to the client profile, um, you go to your client's profile and you scroll down uh, to the right below the payment information section, you'll see the, the client portal section of the client profile. And there you can also click send invitation and it's going to uh, send that invitation to uh, your client. So once you click uh, the send invitation button, it's going to pop up with uh, this pop up right here, which if you already have an email address uh, typed into your client profile, it'll auto populate here and then you can just click send invitation. Uh, but if not, if you don't have an email address already typed into the client profile, uh, you can just type in their email address here and uh, send out that client portal invitation. So you also have the option here to click uh, the edit message button or preview uh, if you wanna take a look at it before you choose to edit it or not. Um, so once you click that edit button, it's gonna take you to this section here where you can uh, modify the, the message that the client will receive when they send the invitation, when they receive the invitation. So um, you don't wanna edit anything in the brackets because those are gonna be auto-populated. So the client name will be auto-populated and the, um, the activation link and the company name will be auto-populated from your software. So you don't wanna modify any of those, uh, but the rest of the um, invitation message, you can edit uh, with your own wording how you see fit. And then you can just click save and preview, and that will save this message um, so that anytime you send out the client portal invitation, it will use your own message instead of our default uh, invitation email message. Okay, so um, here's our default email that uh, your client will receive if you send out the invitation for the client portal. Um, it's going to tell them that they have 30 days to um, activate their account because um, after 30 days this link will expire and they won't be able to register with the client portal unless you send them another invitation. So um, all they have to do now is just click that activate account button and once they click that it will take them to the registration page. And as you see here, uh, their username will be their email address. So whatever email address you sent it to, that will be their username for the, the client portal when they're registering. So then all they'll have to do is just type in uh, their desired password. So it must meet the same requirements as um, e-services or um, uh, our licenses, uh, so you have to have at least seven characters and it has to contain an alpha, numeric, and a special character. So once they type in that password and they confirm it, it's going to take them right into the client portal. Okay, so here is the client dashboard of the client portal. This is basically um, the home screen to the client portal, so whenever they log in, it's gonna pop up with the dashboard and it's gonna show all recent activity. So as you can see in the top right corner, uh, it says welcome uh, and the client's name and it'll uh, have a, a time and date. And then they'll see on the left where they can navigate uh, through the different sections. And then in the top left will be your name, uh, which can also be customized. And I'll get into more about that a little later. So um, here is the dashboard. It's going to show all recent activities. So anything the client has updated in the client portal will be um, shown in the recent activity here. So if they share a file um, when they register, everything or everything that um, you send to them or share with them will show up in the client's recent activity. Okay, uh, the My Files section of the client portal will be uh, all the files that you shared with them or they shared with you. It'll show uh, every file that they've uploaded um, and they can also create their own folders and upload files as well. 
So to, for them to upload files, once they click that, um, that button, it's gonna take them to this section where they can add files. So once they uh, add files, they click that add files button, they'll be able to select uh, whichever files they wanna add to the client portal. And they can also just go ahead and drag and drop into the, the section to the right. Um, you can drag and drop files into there too. And um, once you add all the files or drag and drop all the files that you wish to upload, you can just click that uh, upload all button in green at the bottom right hand corner and that'll upload all the files that you selected at, at once to the client portal. Okay. Uh, your client also has the option to create their own folders. So uh, once they click that create folder button um, at the top of the my files, it's gonna take them to this section here where they can uh, create a new folder and add a folder name. So whenever they create a new folder for themselves, when you access that client in your files, it's gonna show that folder there as well. So any folder they create um, in their client portal, you'll see uh, for in your file section for that particular client. Okay, the chat section of the client portal, here you can um, instant uh, message with your client. So this is the client view of the chat. So um, if the, the client sees you're online, so it'll tell them uh, whether or not you're online, it'll say your name and is online or offline. So you can see here it's showing online. So all they would have to do is type a message and click send and it'll go directly to you with an alert and you'll see that they're messaging you and then you can communicate with your client through the, um, the online chat. And our, our client portal is um, very secure. It's just as secure as our software and it's um, just as secure as online banking. So just to put it into perspective, uh, it's the most um, secure way to share files and uh, chat with your client securely. Uh, your client can also attach files um, to the chat as well. Um, that's another easy way to do it. You can just click attach files at the bottom and uh, they can upload a file to the chat as well. Okay, the settings um, for the client view, this is in, in the client portal. This is, these are the settings that your client can uh, modify in the client portal. So they can change their login email. Uh, they have the option to do that. They also have the option to change their password. Um, and then at the bottom of the settings, they'll have their email notification settings. So here by default, um, these boxes will be checked. Uh, you'll see that um, it will notify them when, when you share a file with them and it'll, it'll notify them uh, to their email when you send them a chat as well. And these are checked by default. Um, so if your client doesn't wanna receive emails when you share files with them or uh, chat message them, then they will have to go into the email notification settings and uncheck those boxes because they are checked by default. Okay, the client questionnaire. Uh, you do, your client does have the ability to access the client questionnaire in the client profile, I mean in the uh, client portal, but you will have to send them the client questionnaire to that email address uh, associated with their client portal before they're able to access the client questionnaire. So um, other than that, it's gonna work the same way as it works when you send them the client questionnaire through email in a link. So they can still navigate it uh, the same way with the sub menus and uh, as they type in um, to different sections, it will update in real time in your software the same way that uh, the link you send them will. But as I mentioned before, you will have to send them the client questionnaire to their email before they can access it in the client portal. So um, now this is, now I'm getting into a little bit more of your side of things. So when you're in the files tab and um, you're trying to uh, share documents with a client, you have a couple different ways you can do it. Um, also in this section, you can see that now the shared by client folder has appeared. So once they, um, once they register with the client portal, um, this shared by client folder will pop up. 
and you'll see um, any files that they share with you into the client portal will be in that shared by client folder there. Okay, so um, one of the ways you can uh, share with the client portal, other than just uploading files, is you can um, you can click the uh, share button. So if you see to the right of all those different PDFs, there's the little hand with a document in it. Um, you can click that button and it will share the document with the client, but you also have the ability to um, select multiple documents and then click that share with a uh, client button at the top of the screen and it'll share all the documents that you selected at once. And also in the top right corner of the files, uh, it's gonna show the status of your client. So as you saw before, um, where it said send invitation when they hadn't registered, um, once they actually register with the client portal, it'll show the status of your client. So it'll show, uh, as you can see here, it's showing they are online. Uh, it'll show if they're offline and also has the option right below there to go to chat. Excuse me, uh, Will, one second, uh, let mm -hmm. me uh, add here. So if you see okay. your client online and let's say you're working on uh, his or her file at this moment and you have a quick question, it's a good uh, way to use uh, online chat just uh, instead of uh, sending them email, calling, and uh, it's always uh, right next to you. Sorry. Okay, um, the uploading files, it's gonna uh, look similar from the client view and the client portal. So this is your view of uploading files to the client portal. So the client portal itself does have unlimited storage, um, but uh, each file can uh, be a maximum of 100 megabytes. And you can see here the different uh, types of files that you can upload, Word, WordPerfect, Excel, PDF, JPEG. Um, TIFF and uh, for QuickBooks the the maximum file size is actually 300 megabytes so it's it's quite a bit um, and um, to upload the files it's going to work the same as in the, uh, the client portal on your client side of things all you have to do is click add files and um, select whatever files you want to upload to the client portal or you can also drag and drop and then once you have all those files selected, um, it works, it functions the same way. All you do is you just click that upload all button and it'll upload all the files that you selected to the client portal at once. Okay, so uh, this, is the, um, this is your view of creating a folder. So it's a little different than the client view because you have the option to um, create a folder that's client related. So if you create a folder that's client related, it's only gonna show for that particular client that you created it for. So that folder will only be in that client's um, files. Um, but if you select the option for all clients and create a folder, it will add that folder to every client in your database. And you also can check the box that says, add this folder to all existing and new clients, uh, no file sharing. Okay, um, another way you can share documents with your client is through our Pitbull Tax mobile app. So um, if you're not at your computer and you uh, already have files uploaded to the um, client portal and you just wanna share them with your client real quick, you can actually go into your, your Pitbull Tax mobile app, and if you select the, the files option at the bottom, it'll open up your, your files in your client portal. It'll look real similar. You'll see all the same fi uh, folders and any files that you've already uploaded to the system. And then all you have to do is select the particular um, document that you wish to share with your client through the mobile app, and it'll pop up uh, with what you see on the right, you'll have the option to download and open, share or delete. So if you just click share, it'll instantly share uh, that document to the client portal and you don't even have to be at your computer. Okay, so the chat tab, if you click the chat tab in the top right corner uh, on the blue menu bar, it's gonna open up uh, all your clients that are online 
currently on the client portal. So you'll be able to see any client that's online that you are able to chat with at the moment. Um, you also have the option to show offline users if you just wanna see um, every client that you have that's registered with the client portal, you have that option. Um, well, you can send a you... message offline as well. So if you don't uh, yeah. expect the immediate answer, you can still send a message. And when they're um, uh, online, they'll see it. And plus, they will get notification that uh, yeah, you chatted get... with them. Yeah, they'll get that email notification uh, unless they uncheck that box. Okay, and then once you do select the client, it's gonna take you to the chat section here. So here you can uh, chat with your client uh, online. And uh, you can also uh, attach files to the chat here as well. And um, it's just basically instant messaging through the client portal and it's just more secure than you know texting your client. Okay, so client portal activity. So this is uh, really similar to the client portal activity um, in the client's view of the client portal. So it'll show you, um, anything the, the client has done with the client portal. So here you can see it shows that the, the client registered with the client portal, or if they send you a message or um, add a file, it'll all pop up here in the client portal activity. And whenever um, they do um, add something to the client portal, you'll see the little um, explanation point, the red circle with the explanation point in it to the right of the client portal activity. Um, notifying you that they have um, updated something in the client portal so that you can click it and check it out and see what they've done. Okay, um, if your client forgets their username or password, um, you can go into, this is in the client profile. So as I showed you earlier in the PowerPoint where you could send the invitation through the client profile, once you send that invitation and they've registered with the client portal and you go back to the client profile and the client portal section of the client profile, you'll see this right here. So it'll show you their username and then it'll give you the option to reset the password or block their access. So um, you can just change their, their username there if they wanna change their username. If you need to reset the password for them, you can just uh, click that reset password link right there. And if you're no longer um, dealing with the client anymore and you just want to block access uh, to the client portal, you can just check that block access button right there and um, they won't be able to access the client portal anymore. Okay, so uh, customization. So uh, this is in the client portal settings. So when you go into, into the settings section of your software, and then you select client portal, it'll take you to this screen here. And here you have the option to uh, customize uh, the logo settings um, or add a profile photo uh, or and your name to the client portal. <clears throat> so all you have to do is you just click upload logo. And uh, as long as it's smaller than uh, 500 kilobytes and it's a ping JPEG or um, GIF, then you can upload the, the photo and uh, save it to the settings. Okay, so here's an example of what it'll look like. Once you upload your logo to the client portal settings, you'll see uh, in the top left corner, it has the company logo instead of just your name. So it's nice just to have the, the client portal fully customized. So when people log in, um, they'll see, they'll recognize your company logo and your company name. And if not, um, if, if maybe your clients don't really recognize your company name as much as they recognize your face and your name, uh, you have the option to put your face up there as well. So like in this example here, uh, you can see my picture in the top left corner. So if you think uh, your client is gonna recognize uh, your picture more than your company name, you have the option to add your profile pic to the top left corner instead. Um, so here, here's an example of that. And then you can also see uh, with the client dashboard uh, what it looks like once um, you know, files have been uploaded. You can see uh, 
uh, file shared. And then if you see the button on the, the right corner, uh, that's the button to download the document. So your client can just download the PDF by clicking that button um, once you, you've shared the files with them. Okay, so if, um, if your client uh, isn't able to log into the client portal, they don't have the link and you need to resend it to them, you just go to the client portal settings and then you scroll down to the custom sign in page link section. Okay, so once you um, click uh, the show sign in link button in the bottom left, it's gonna pop up with the sign in link here. So there, you can just copy and paste that link. You can email it to them. Um, you can uh, send it to them however you need. And uh, there they can just click that link and it'll take them to the client portal login where they can just type in their username and password from before and log back into the client portal. And like I mentioned before, if they don't remember their username and password, when you send them that link, you can always go back to the client profile and uh, change their username or password so that they can access the client portal. Okay, you also have the ability to um, use our, our embed code for the client portal. So if you have a, a programmer in your office, an IT guy that um, knows how to um, add codes to your website, uh, here we have the embed code. So it, as long as he adds this to your website code, uh, you, you can just have the client portal link embedded into your website. So whenever your clients um, need to access the client portal, they can just go to your website, click that, um, that link that you have embedded into your website, and it'll take them right to the client portal login where they can log back in and um, access everything. Okay, the uh, client portal um, chat settings. So uh, you do have the uh, option to disable the chat um, if if your clients are are bugging you too much and you don't want to um, have to deal with them with, through the chat anymore. Then you can uh, you do have the option to disable chat, and you also have the option to uh, display the representative name or display the company name in the chat for the users. So um, right above where you're chatting, um, you can choose whatever you want to display as your name when you're chatting with your clients through the client portal. So the email notification settings, it's gonna work the same way as it does for your client. Um, the e email notification settings, uh, if you check them, it will notify you, it'll send you an email uh, whenever your client shares a file. And then you also have the option to have it email you every time uh, your client sends you a chat. So if you're um, not online and they send you a chat through the client portal and you have that box checked, it will send you an email letting you know that your client has sent you a chat. Okay, so um, if you guys ever have any questions, um, I'm sure you guys have questions. Uh, you can always contact us. Um, here's my contact information right here. Uh, here's our phone number and my extension is 106. And um, anytime you have any questions, you can just give me a call or you can send me an email. Uh, I also put my email address on here as well. Uh, so you can send me an email anytime you have any questions about the client portal or anything to do with the software. Perfect, thank you so much, Will. So you rushed us through. Uh, very uh, quickly. So now uh, we have a lot of time for questions and answers. Let me go over uh, some of them. Uh, hopefully we can uh, answer all of uh, the questions. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. um, um, how do you know who uh, you are sending invitation to? So when you're sending invite, you will see the client's name right in that message. Uh, so it uh, does show you the client's name. When you do bulk sending of an invitation, you will not see the client's name, but uh, for example, some client profiles, uh, they don't have email addresses. 
So you will see a pop-up right away saying that uh, for this client, so you need to enter the email addresses before the system can send client portal invitations. So uh, you can ignore it and it will send invitations to everybody with email. Um, but uh, yes, so when sending invitations, you are usually uh, able to see uh, the names of the clients. And um, I think a question we had recently uh, very uh, often asked, what do you need in order to send the client portal invite? You actually don't need much. You just need a client's name and email address. You don't need anything else. You don't need to know their date of birth, so their address, so their phone number. So client's name, John Smith, and John Smith's email address. That's it. You can create a prospect if they, you don't uh, know their social security numbers. Right now, we will have a large influx of uh, clients who needs to file their tax returns. Uh, because they want to get their stimulus payment checks. So um, you are going to create a client portals um, invites for um, prospects. So all you need, if they call in or, or if they email you, um, uh, you need to enter their name, uh, email, and save them as a prospect. And after that, you can send invite to portal. So uh, I highly recommend not to share uh, text documents through email. It's not a secure way. So there are, there are other tools for this, and Client Portal is one of them. It's safe, secure, and fast. Okay, let me go over other questions. Um, yeah, so it's always best to put in their email address when you're creating the client por profile. Exactly. Right? Yeah, you always want to make sure you at least get that email address when you're creating them as a client in the mm -hmm. profile. Okay, next question is, when a client initiates a chat, does it interrupt your work by popping up a notification or do you have to uh, prearrange a chat? No, Lauren, you don't need to... Um, uh, pre-arrange a chat. It's not like uh, an appointment with a client. Uh, if you are online, you can answer it right away. Uh, there is no pop-up that is displayed in your software. You can continue working with a different client or uh, with anything else uh, in the software. All you see in the client uh, portal activity, you will see um, a red exclamation point next to it. That means there is some activity. So, um, Yes, uh, this slide exactly. So uh, red exclamation point uh, in the circle. And once you click on it, you can uh, see what is there, whether a client shared a file with you or there is a chat message waiting for you. You can answer it at any time. And even if you answered the chat after uh, the client uh, went offline, they will see it next time and they will get email notifications uh, from the system saying that there is a new chat from a representative waiting for them. Okay, um, let me get to another one. Do the client chat save for future reference? Yes, all clients' uh, chat messages are saved. You cannot delete it. So we had questions in the past from some customers who want to delete, delete some chat messages. It's done on purpose. You cannot delete chat messages. It's done uh, for, uh, for you to keep records of every single communication with a client. And please don't ask us to delete because we won't be able to as well. With respect to all clients, would it change the client files that have been made inactive? Um, I guess the question was if uh, the client is inactive, uh, will I lose uh, chat messages and files shared uh, by that particular client or shared with that particular client? No, um, inactive clients are never deleted, so the information always stays in Pitbull Tax software. Uh, in order to activate client and see uh, his or her files, you need to go to um, client profile, scroll down to the bottom, um, under other information section, and you can change the status of the client to active. And after that, they will appear 
again as active and you can browse their files or chat messages if you need to do uh, uh, so. So inactivating clients is not a problem. Does a mobile app work on iPad and how to download it? I believe yes, it does work on iPad. I've never used it. Uh, it's uh, useful on the phones, but um, Dylan said yes, you can. I guess he tried it to download on iPad. So to download Pitbull Tax Mobile, you can go to um, uh, App Store uh, or Google Play. So it uh, is uh, it works with both um, Androids and iPhones, and just search for Pitbull Tax Mobile and uh, you can download it. It's free, it's available to all customers of Pitbull Tax. It's not available to your clients, only to you as a representative. Um, the question was, when you create a folders for, for you as a representative on the files menu, and you are adding folders to all existing clients. Will it add uh, these folders to inactive clients as well? The answer is yes, it will add folders to everybody. Give me a second, it keeps scrolling my questions. If you attach files through the chat, will the attached file automatically save in the shared files folder? Yes, so if the clients uh, are chatting with you and they're attaching files into chats right away, they will be automatically saved to clients, uh, shared by clients folder. You don't need to uh, save it again. And sometimes it's easy to uh, communicate that way because the client may upload for you 50 files at a time and you are not sure where to find certain information. So when you're chatting with a client, uh, you can tell him, okay, uh, tell me where uh, I can see this and uh, he can upload um, a file to chat message. So that's uh, why uh, that function is there. Can you name display in the show up link instead of Pitbull tags? I guess the question was, uh, um, William, uh, I think you meant uh, for customization of uh, the link. Uh, if uh, you can change Pitbull tags to uh, your domain. This feature is not available for everybody, only for those who purchased white labeling add-on from us, you can um, hide pitbulltax.com. But all others, uh, all clients will see uh, the client portal um, and Pitbull Tax domain on it. You can customize uh, when you, um, can you show the uh, picture with a sign in link? Um, can you show that slide? Um, the so, sign in link? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Okay. Yeah. Right here? Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, thank you. So, your mm -hmm. sign in link is unique for you as a customer, for uh, your uh, license only. So uh, you can share, for example, if clients uh, call you and say, oh, I don't remember how to log into your client portal. So you can go to settings, uh, choose client portal, and you can copy and paste that link in the email response or anywhere else uh, uh, you communicate uh, uh, with them. So you can customize uh, what goes at the end of that link. You see the hashtag, uh, um, it's a several uh, alphanumeric characters. So you can customize it. Um, you can check that drop down menu and uh, you will see several options. For example, my company name is IBA Tax Group. So I can put under the um, slash at the end IBA Tax or IBA Tax Group. So there are several variations of your uh, company name. So you can choose for your sign in link and you can save it. Uh, or you can reset to default, uh, which will have the uh, hashtag at the end of the link. Uh, but if you want to completely uh, erase pitbulltax.com in this link, in this URL, 
you will have to uh, get white labeling add-on. So if you don't want to show any reference, white labeling is the only option. Okay, next question is, can you name display in the show up link instead of pitbull tags? I guess I just answered that again. Does Pitbull have time tracking? And if so, does it track time you spent with a client in chat? Uh, yes, we do have time tracking. Uh, however, you have to manually activate it. It doesn't uh, track time uh, uh, that you spend chatting with a client. So everything, you have to start the clock and uh, stop it. So in that case, yes, time tracking is available. Everything in the chat, though, is timestamped, though. So you yeah, will see a timestamp. Time 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 stamp, so you time. will see when you chatted with them, uh, but um, uh, it will not automatically uh, track time that, oh, you chatted with this client for a half hour. No, it doesn't do that. Um, can I change an auto populated email address in the invite on the fly? Yes, you can. So you can send an uh, invite uh, to a different email address. For example, if uh, your client profile has one email address, but the client uh, is telling you that I didn't get it, uh, let me try a different email. So yes, when you invite the client, uh, you can change email address on the fly, and that will be the username. So make sure that the username is um, changed as well. Well, it will be automatically changed let, uh, let them know that that will be their username if uh, they cannot read the instructions in the email. If client updates info on client questionnaire, will automatically update forms that we created from the questionnaire? Now, if the client makes uh, updates in the client questionnaire, it doesn't flow automatically to the forms. You always have to click uh, verify and populate button. So if it's done on purpose, so we don't have junk information in our IRS forms. So whenever client makes changes, you need to click that link, verify and populate to forms. And besides, they cannot make changes once they submit client questionnaire. The client questionnaire, uh, questionnaire closes up for them. So the link disappears. They they don't have any access to, to it unless they didn't click submit button yet. So if you uh, populated information before and then resend them the link, they uh, added more information, you still need to go to client questionnaire, check the uh, errors, if any, uh, cl uh, clear those errors out, and only then you, you have to click verify and populate button in order to uh, get to the forms. Can clients is signed and is it KBA compliant? Um, we do not have uh, e-signatures on uh, that are KBA compliant in the software. However, it's in the works. We're working on integration uh, right now with DocuSign uh, that will have uh, e-signatures on the IRS forms uh, and hopefully that IRS uh, will allow us uh, to um, get e-signatures on the POAs uh, sooner or later, hopefully sooner. Um, so at this time, you can e-sign only two letters, engagement letter and um, IRC 7216 um, mandatory disclosure. So those two letters can be e-signed. They're not KBA compliant, but it stems uh, the IP address uh, where the client signed these uh, uh, these letters and uh, time and date. Can the clients sign documents online? I guess I just answered the same um, question. Um, none of the IRS forms and payable tax can be e-signed at the moment. There was a guidance um, from the IRS yesterday, some internal memo, which we cannot get hold of it, uh, yet, uh, saying that some POAs can be e-signed. I see on the forums a lot of conflicting information. Um, so the CAF unit will not accept uh, power of attorney uh, 
uh, that was e-signed. At this time, it's not an option. If you work with a revenue agent or revenue officer, then power of attorney can be e-signed at this time only. Due to the COVID-19 situation we have right now, yesterday it was announced that uh, uh, ROs and RAs will accept e-signed power of attorneys and some other documents, but it's not compatible with CAF units. So don't fax your power of attorneys or tax information authorizations uh, to the CAF unit uh, because they may be rejected. Yes, I know some representatives, they use DocuSign and they e-sign power of attorneys and they say that some of them are accepted. Well, it's exception uh, that it fell through the crack, but that's not a legitimate option at this time. The IRS does not allow e-signatures on any IRS forms prepared in Pitbull Tax, whether it's power of attorney, tax information authorization, or collection information statements, or offering compromise packages, so anything. Um, any documents stored on your server will be encrypted? Yes, all documents stored uh, in uh, client portal and under files for you as a representative are encrypted. Can you send 8879 and have e-signature capabilities in portal? Not at this time, but we're working on it and uh, I hope that very soon we'll uh, announce release of that integration. Does a client have access to their own transcripts through the portal? Uh, they can if you share it with them. So whenever you pull transcripts for the client, uh, those uh, uh, files will go automatically to files uh, uh, menu and the, port, uh, the folder is called transcripts. So you can go to that folder and share files uh, you want with a client. In that case, they will see their transcripts. Otherwise, everything that you pull is not automatically shared. Do clients have an option to sign documents through the client portal? No, they don't have an option to e-sign. Will there be a video of this webinar on your website so we're able to watch it again? Yes, absolutely. We're recording this webinar and we'll make it available uh, shortly after. Can e-signatures be made on documents we upload? If so, can client use a finger to sign? For example, IRS does not accept digital signatures on POA. Uh, folks, let me repeat it again. We do not have e-signature capability in Pitbull Tax as of today. However, we are working on it. So once it's done, you will be able to e-sign. And yes, they will be able to e-sign with the finger or they will be able to um, create a automatic signature with their first and last name. As of now, let me repeat it. As of today, March 31st, 2020, we, uh, 2020, we don't have this capability. And IRS does not allow yet to e-sign power of attorneys and tax information authorizations uh, forms. How do you retrieve the chats? The chats uh, uh, is always in the blue menu bar. So you can see chat, you can go there. Uh, if your clients are online, you will see uh, exactly that um, will is showing you uh, that page so chat is in blue menu bar uh, online uh, clients will show with a green uh, radio button next to them you can search a client by name um, and you can check the box at the bottom show offline users so in this case um, you you will be able to um, get to the chat messages easily everything will be saved in here and you can scroll up and mm -hmm. down, see the entire chat. If I send a tax return to a client, can they sign the e-file documents and the engagement letter? From your software, I guess yes, you can uh, e-sign 8879s. I use ProSeries, so yes, we do have an option and we do use it. We're sending uh, tax returns for um, e-signature. 
uh, engagement letter in pinball tax can be uh, sent for electronic signature yes uh, I guess I announced it too early and the people uh, keep posting questions that we do not have e-signature capability on IRS forms as of now in Pitbull Tax. How can this help us with non-filers? I didn't hear everything you said earlier. Uh, okay, non-filers. Uh, right now, everybody is calling your offices trying to get the stimulus payment checks. So those people who didn't file the 2018 and 2019 returns, they will not get their stimulus payments. So for them, uh, it is highly recommended to file their returns. So this client portal can help you with non-filers. So they can share their tax documents with you securely, not by emailing you or uh, mailing you um, documents to your office. Uh, many of us are working from home right now, so uh, checking mail in your office uh, may not be uh, an option. Uh, so that's why Client Portal is its online uh, tool that uh, you can use with practically any client. So they can share the documents. Everybody in United States have uh, any uh, sort of computer, iPad, uh, iPhone uh, at home, and uh, they can log into client portal and uh, share their tax documents with you. That's how you work with non-filers at this time. Give me a second. Uh, how long are files retained in portal? Any size limit to the portal? Uh, the files are stored indefinitely. Nobody deletes the files um, if your account is active in Pitbull Tax. Even if you uh, cancel your license with Pitbull Tax, uh, the files are stored for six years and you can come back at any time and uh, you will have access to all your files that you uploaded and you didn't delete, for example, uh, when you exited the software, when you closed, uh, canceled your license. So if uh, you didn't delete those, uh, we will keep the files. However, they are being erased if your account was inactive for six years. And any size limit to the portal? No, we provide unlimited storage to your portal. So there is no um, size limit to portal. There is no uh, limit to how many files you can upload for each client. It's unlimited. The only limit we impose is on the file size limit, and it is huge. So for each file, we give you 100 megabytes. It's huge amount of data, even if you save 100 pages uh, in one file and you scan it, uh, 100 pages in one file, the PDF will be max 20, 30 megs. We allow you to uh, upload 100 megabytes. And for QuickBooks files, it's even higher. So it's 300 megabytes. So if you work with um, your accounting clients, you can use the portal to share QuickBooks files up to 300 megabytes. And let me reiterate file formats that um, you can upload. Uh, it's PDF, Excel, Word, WordPerfect. Um, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF files. So any image files uh, that you, uh, your clients snap on their phones, they can be shared here as well. Can you give me a little bio on Pitbull Tax? Uh, well, it's uh, off topic, but uh, yes, uh, Pitbull Tax is a tax resolution software that uh, has been around since 2010. So we provide uh, representatives uh, nationwide uh, the tools necessary to prepare uh, all IRS collection cases from offering compromise to installment agreements to trust fund recovery penalty cases, innocent spouse reliefs, injured spouse reliefs, and so on and so forth. So um, we have uh, automated IRS transcript delivery uh, tool integrated in Pitbull Tax soft software. So you can pull your client's transcripts uh, and uh, 
uh, complete your cases. We have integrated case management and uh, billing in Pitbull Tax, scenario simulated add-ons. Uh, we have uh, custom customized uh, white labeling option in the software. So anything uh, you need to do uh, when you're dealing with uh, collection clients, when your clients owe the IRS, Pitbull Tax is your go-to software. Can my clients upload, download documents from their phones? Um, yes, they can. Uh, they can go to client portal uh, online on their phones and they can upload uh, files uh, right there. Is there a way to not allow client questionnaire updates to automatically update previously prepared forms or uh, versions within the forms? I would like to have previous versions accessible if possible. Uh, like I said, Emily, uh, whenever client questionnaire is updated by your client, the information does not automatically flow to IRS forms. It's only manual uh, function. So you have to manually click the button, verify and populate uh, forms in order for that info to flow to IRS forms. So it does not uh, preserve the previous versions of uh, uh, what has been submitted, uh, but you have uh, full control of how to populate the data to, uh, from client questionnaire to the forms. Can you rearrange client uploaded files to your more organized file system? Yes, absolutely. And uh, in fact, you can even rename files and you can create a tax uh, that are um, that will help you to understand what it is. It happens to me a lot. My clients, I have a couple of them that upload to me hundreds of files and they name them one, two, three, four, five. So I'm ready to shoot myself. Uh, and uh, every time I need to uh, look for the 2017 tax return, I don't remember whether it was one, two, three, or five. So <laughs> you can create tax. You can uh, actually rename those files and say, okay, this is 2018 return. This is uh, collection uh, statement. This is for 433, uh, 656 signed and so on and so forth. Yes, you have this ability and you can organize it. You can create folders uh, and uh, organize it uh, as um, you uh, see fit for your practice. Uh, without the app, I don't understand, Diego, what's without the app question. What is document request? Is it referring to 433-3s? Document request is a letter uh, that lists uh, the documents that you need uh, from your client to prepare your case. Uh, so um, you can send it as a letter uh, via email. You don't need uh, to, you can share it uh, through client portal as well. Uh, but it's list what documents you need. For example, the pay stops, uh, bank statements, uh, and so on and so forth. Sorry, folks, I'm filtering the questions relating to the client portal because there are so many and uh, I'm almost uh, out of time. Uh, will you make recording available to the participants? Yes, um, it will be available. Our clients seem to struggle uploading QuickBooks backup files in the portal. Uh, are there any special instructions for this type of upload? Not really. Uh, so if you have problems, uh, please um, uh, either open support ticket or call the offices. Uh, I just want to reiterate that we do work. All our employees, uh, they work from home. Uh, starting March 19th, and but all our phone lines remain the same. So thank God we have capability to uh, work from home and uh, we have a VoIP system. So everybody is equipped and uh, ready to answer your uh, calls. Um, 
I just said that clients cannot download the Pitbull Tax application. Did I mi misunderstand? Diego, I didn't say that Pitbull Tax Mobile is for your clients. Pitbull Tax Mobile is only for representatives, you as a Pitbull Tax customer. Pitbull Tax uh, Mobile is not available to your clients. So at this time, it's only uh, you. So you can share documents through Pitbull Tax Mobile with your clients, and uh, but you cannot uh, um, give access to your clients to Pitbull Tax Mobile. So, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if uh, we will, you are willing to stay longer so I can answer some more questions. Um, do you have integration with EFAX service? No, we do not. Um, when you say QuickBooks files, does that include QuickBooks backup file if it meets size requirement? Yes, backup files as well. Well, as of one hour ago, IRS accepting email and digital signatures on tax documents due to coronavirus. I mentioned that earlier, uh, there is an internal memo. It is not for CAF unit. So you cannot fax to um, um, Memphis or Ogden um, CAF unit, your e-signed power of attorneys as of yet. So that was an internal memo. Uh, you can um, send it to your ROs, revenue officers or revenue agents, but it's not going to be accepted by CAF unit. Yes, of course, uh, sometimes uh, they can process it, but it's just an exception. It's not the rule. Uh, again, this information as of now. And I just want to mention that uh, Memphis CAF unit is down at this time. So if you uh, cannot fax anything to Memphis, you please uh, fax it to Ogden. And uh, please don't call our office asking for fax number. 2848 instructions, two fax line, lines. One is Memphis uh, for East Coast clients, and one is Ogden, uh, West Coast. On the first page of 2848, you will see fax numbers. Um, with uh, that being said, I think we'll wrap up. Uh, if uh, we have any unanswered questions, we'll absolutely answer to you by email. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I just want to mention that yesterday, um, surprisingly, IRS updated collection information standards for uh, 2020. Uh, and uh, I didn't expect it coming uh, due to this situation with the coronavirus but I guess uh, they didn't uh, put a hold on it. Uh, a bummer that uh, food and clothing uh, standards and most of uh, vehicle operating cost standards reduced this year. So I'm going to send um, system notification to all of you uh, today, but uh, just a heads up, it has been already updated in Pitbull Tax and we'll send a system, uh, system notification to all licensees. So um, yes, Memphis is down, uh, sent your power of attorneys in uh, 8821s to Ogden as of now. Uh, we are sending um, a lot of updates um, to our licensees. If you're not a member of our Pitbull Tax community uh, yet, uh, please join it. Just search in Facebook Pitbull Tax community and if you're active licensees, we'll accept your uh, request. And uh, there are a lot of information shared in, uh, in the community that uh, can keep you updated. So again, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and please uh, stay safe, my friends. Bye-bye.